key title card. If you watched last year's A Very Grim and Grim Christmas, you might remember that I reviewed the D or possibly E grade Christmas sci-fi film Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. And when I was reviewing that movie last year, I lamented that with such a cool title, the film had a lot of potential, but unfortunately it lived up to absolutely none of it. And indeed this year, I'm not going to lie, I chose to watch this film because the title Infinite Santa Claus 8000 sounds, well, absolutely ludicrous. However, quite fortunately, unlike Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, this film not only lives up to the bizarreness that its title promises, but quite possibly entirely surpasses it. At the start of the movie, we're told that war, famine and greed have killed off the human race, and now all that remains are mutants and robots. It's a rather bleak future in which we're told everyone must kill to survive, even Santa Claus, which brings us into the opening scene, a death battle between Santa Claus and a killer robot. Well, that's the setting, but what exactly is the story? Well, Santa Claus, who has the ability to heal, and a young girl, are being pursued by an evil scientist who wishes to steal their DNA. Hang on, that sounds rather familiar. Dark future, elderly father figure with healing abilities, young girl, evil scientist. Is this Christmas's answer to Logan? Well, no, of course it's not, don't be ridiculous. Wolverine, as far as I'm aware, never fought a giant Easter bunny, more's the pity. Although, at one point, Wolverine did play the Easter bunny, but that's getting wildly off topic. And so I best start stopping my digression and get back onto the topic at hand, which is Santa Claus 8000. The world, and indeed Santa Claus, have fallen on rough times. The reindeer are gone, the North Pole is gone, and heck, even the children are gone. But Santa Claus is still keeping a stiff upper lip about the whole thing. He has himself an oasis of Christmas cheer in the midst of this apocalyptic environment, in the form of Santa's ranch, where he stays with his robotic reindeer replacements, and a young robotic girl named Martha. Why did you say that, Dad? There, despite their apocalyptic predicament, and despite being reduced to cannibalism, Santa and Martha WHY DID YOU SAY THAT NAME?! of whom Santa is rather protective of, being one of the last innocent creatures on the entire planet, try to keep the Christmas spirit alive. However, things go from bad to even worse when the evil scientist Shackleton, who is definitely on the naughty list, kidnaps Martha in an attempt to lure Santa Claus out because he wants to steal Santa Claus's DNA in order to use his power and his healing abilities to enhance his robotic army and hordes of mutants. And that's the basic, or perhaps not so basic, premise of the film, with most of the movie surrounding Santa Claus trying to get Martha back, Martha won't die tonight, or trying to break into Shackleton's facility, or escape from his armies. And if you're thinking that the story and movie in general sounds absolutely hectic and ludicrous, well then you're entirely correct, the movie is definitely that. This, Infinite Santa Claus 8000, is quite possibly the most absurd movie I've ever watched. I mean, the creature that Shackleton initially sends to abduct Martha is a mutated Easter Bunny riding some sort of hover sled, which results in a high speed and rather long chase through the apocalyptic setting, with Santa Claus chasing close behind in his sled led by robotic reindeer. And as absurd as that might sound, it's not even close to being the most ridiculous scene in the entire film. Infinite Santa Claus 8000 is really a spectacle that has to be seen to be believed, and even after doing so, you'll probably like me have to watch it a second time to make sure that you didn't doze off and imagine half of it, because it's just pure insanity. And so if you're sick of the endless, endless array of Hallmark-style Christmas movies about families having mild tips that center entirely around awkward conversations and relationships that you don't really care about, or if you're tired of all the Christmas horror movies centering around a killer Santa Claus going on a rampage as if he's Jason Voorhees, then maybe it's time you check out Infinite Santa 8000. It is undoubtedly the most unique Christmas movie I've ever seen, and even beyond holiday-themed films, it definitely stands out as being quite original. Past the storyline, however, one thing that can simply not be left uncommented upon is the art style and animation within Infinite Santa 8000. A lot of Christmas movies feel like they're nothing but quick cash grabs trying to take advantage of the season. There will always be someone who watches a Christmas movie, because when is the Christmas season, people are looking for Christmas movies to watch, so it's pretty much a guaranteed audience, even if that audience is not huge. However, when it comes to Infinite Santa 8000, it feels like this film is one of those rare exceptions. Because this movie really does seem to be a total labor of love. 
I mean, I think it probably speaks volumes that the largest list of names in the entire credits is the thank you list, which I assume to be people who have donated or supported the film in some other way, whereas the list of people who actually worked on the film is more than five times shorter, consisting only of 15 people, of which several of them have their names listed as doing multiple jobs. This is a feature-length, seemingly largely hand-drawn movie, which only had six artists-slash-animators working on it, and only three voice actors. That is absolutely insane, and the amount of work that these six people had to do to put out an hour and a half of content is just mind-boggling. The art style itself is extremely cool, for the most part I love it, although at some points it did feel like it was giving me a bit of sensory overload, and I felt like I had to look away because it was just frying my brain. The end of the big chase against the Easter Bunny is a good example of this, where between the moving backgrounds, rapidly changing foregrounds, and heavy metal music, it can just feel like a little bit too much, considering how long it goes for. But despite on a couple of occasions having to look away from the screen and blink a few times as if I was watching a 3D movie that was taxing my eyes, the art style in this film is undeniably interesting, and undeniably endearing to me. It's one of those films where practically anywhere in the movie you pause, you'll probably stumble upon a still image that could easily be used as a desktop background. The animation is somewhat reminiscent of South Park's paper puppet stop motioning, but the actual art style itself is entirely different. The thick black outlines, outlandish designs, and vibrant colours are sort of reminiscent of the doodles one might do in the back of a textbook while imagining situations far more interesting than the ongoing math class. And I think that's one of the reasons I find this film so very endearing. It feels like it's the direct creation of an active imagination that somehow managed to get loose and result in a movie. The things that they were able to achieve with this style of animation is also rather impressive. For one, the large-scale battles involving multiple enemies, despite being done in such a simplistic way, turns out looking suitably epic. And for two, as I said, the Santa Claus chase scene in the beginning is rather fast-paced and exciting and really quite cool to look at, even if it did towards the end completely fry my brain. There were a few things about the movie that I wasn't too fond of. For instance, some of the story didn't make a great deal of sense, such as the fact that Shackleton decided to send an army of robot children that are easily corruptible by Christmas presents to attack Santa Claus, who, obviously, being Santa Claus, would almost certainly give the robotic children presents, and so therefore corrupt them. To quote the other man who goes around in red suits, Not a great plan. And the voice acting, much like the animation and heavy reliance of drums in the music, can occasionally, I found, be a bit too much, but overall, for the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I think in all areas where it might fall slightly short of being an excellent movie, it more than makes up for in being extremely interesting artistically. And while it might not be the best film ever, or even the best Christmas movie ever, it's definitely, as far as I'm aware, the best movie I can think of about Santa Claus fighting an army of mutants in a post-apocalyptic setting. And so if you're looking for an entirely unique film to watch this Christmas, with an endearing art style and slamming soundtrack, then I highly suggest you check out Infinite Santa 8000. Unlike the other two sci-fi Christmas movies I've looked at in the previous two years of A Very Grim and Grim Christmas, this movie appears to have been made by people that were actually interested in what they were doing, and is, unlike Santa Claus Conquers the Martians and the Star Wars Holiday Special, a film that I'm very glad exists and of the three is the only one I don't regret having watched. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.